ADHD is like an IRL buff while simultaneously being a debuff. Sometimes it helps me really dial in on something I need to do. It's what they call hyperfocus. On the flip side though, it's really easy to hyperfocus on something you shouldn't. Hi, do you hope everyone? My name's Mr. Fruit and welcome to today's video where I wanted to sit down with you all and talk about gaming with ADHD. Made a video with Robin Blue recently. We were playing Destiny 2 and I brought up why I haven't been playing Destiny. Despite the fact that I like the game and a lot of my viewers like the game. So one would think, okay, smart business strategy. Just post more Destiny videos. Easy answer, right? Yeah, except that my brain literally won't let me. Okay, this is where the ADHD kicks in. It's like I'm Gru. The meme where he's pointing at the big poster paper. Yeah, that's me sitting down with my brain. Okay, we like Destiny 2. My brain's like, uh-huh. Our viewers like Destiny 2. And again, my brain's like, makes sense. Of all our videos, Destiny videos typically perform the best. And therefore, we're not going to play Destiny or make videos about Destiny. And I'm sitting here like, wait, what? My brain goes, yes, it doesn't make any sense. And this isn't just exclusive to gaming in my life. I see this in practically everything I do. Don't get me started on like hobbies I pick up and put down, especially during my childhood. When I like something, I like something until I don't. And I know that sounds self-explanatory, but this comes back to the whole destiny thing. I'll hyper-focus on a game, whether or not it's intentional. If I'm really enjoying something, I'm playing it, I'm loving it, I'm breathing it. I know I'm really hyper-focusing when I'm not playing the game, but consuming things about the game before I play the game again. That's when I know I'm deep. And then there's always this little flicker of sadness somewhere, somewhere in the back of my brain because I know this is great. I like this. I'm enjoying this. I like this feeling. Ooh, dopamine. But realizing that at any moment, any morning when I wake up, it's gone. Whatever whatever it was, whatever that dog game it was, suddenly I couldn't care less about whatever it was. So in this example, Destiny 2. I'm playing it. I'm loving it. I'm grinding it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Carrots. We're chasing. We're getting all them carrots. And then one day I wake up. I sit down at my desk and looking at the words destiny elicits something akin to a gag reflex. I shudder looking at it. I never want to touch it. I don't want to launch it. And oddly enough, at the same time though, I'm like, I like this game. Why don't I want to boot it up? And without giving it much more thought, I move on to the next thing. The cycle repeats itself. Now, sometimes my enjoyment can last days, weeks, months, although that's, that's a stretch. That rarely happens, but typically it's on a much shorter time scale. I'm even talking sometimes hours. One day, pick up a game. This game is sick, bro. I grind it all day. I go to bed thinking about it. I'm like, that was so sick. I can't wait to play more tomorrow. I wake up, I never boot the game again. The amount of games in my Steam library that have like six hours or less is criminal. Now that's twofold. Obviously the biggest crime there is the fact that I just give up on the games. But the second is that on Steam, if you have less than two hours in a game, you can ask for a refund. More than that, you can't. I have a lot of games that are just right over that two hour threshold. That's a lot of money. In fact, I believe I have over a thousand games in my Steam library because that's another symptom of my ADHD and gaming. I play everything under the sun. There's almost no genre, no setting, no narrative, no, no nothing that'll pretty much prevent me from trying the game. I will literally give almost any game a shot. And it's great because I get to experience a lot of things and broaden my horizons. And in that way, it's like a vast body of water, but so shallow. I never get any deeper than like surface level with anything. My brain just says, feed me dopamine. Give me all the dopamine hits. Ooh, something new. Ooh, something new. Ooh, look at this. We haven't tried this. But then the novelty always wears off so fast, suddenly no more dopamine, couldn't care less. Now, I wasn't diagnosed with ADHD until I was 27. It explains a lot though when I look back at my earlier childhood and adolescence and even adulthood thus far, that maybe somewhere along the way, someone should have maybe mentioned that that was a possibility. Because also, if you know me or keep up with me or whatever, I suffer from depression as well as general anxiety. But the bulk of it do be the big D. And I'm not talking about depression. No, I'm talking about depression. But until I was diagnosed, for the first time, I heard that ADHD and depression can be comorbid. In fact, majority of the time they are was when I was diagnosed with ADHD. At no point in my life, while I was being diagnosed with depression, among other things, and given meds, blah, 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 did anyone ever even mention that or entertain the idea of ADHD? Ask me, test me, nothing. Now, I've been able to manage, and it's enlightening 
knowing what I do now, as well as ADHD and trying to understand how my brain works. And the nice part about having the diagnosis is I'm able to be a little easier on myself. Now, instead of being frustrated when my brain doesn't want to do what seems like the normal, now I understand why that is. And instead of beating myself up about it, I can try and work with my brain to figure out a way around it. Sort of like going with the current rather than against. But because of this ADHD and playing everything, I am master of nothing, but I'm just average or slightly above average at most everything. And I know that might sound like a subtle flex, but it's really not. I can pick up things quicker than most people. I've known that for most of my life. You know, maybe call it beginner's luck. I get new thing, new thing makes sense. I'm fairly decent at said thing immediately, but then it never goes any further than that because I never invest into whatever that is. My skill floor and skill ceiling are like right next to each other. This can be frustrating to me because even though I enjoy a game and I want to get better at a game, despite telling myself that I want to or trying to, I almost never actually manage. League of Legends is like the only exception to that rule. I only played League more because I was bad at it immediately. And that was like a new thing for me. Typically, I'm not absolute dog water when I start something. I was dog on League. Totally foreign to me. Never played PC games. Nothing even remotely close to a MOBA. You would have thought I didn't have opposable thumbs. And see, that would have fire under me. And I'm like, that's, that's not okay. I want to get better. So I did. But again, exception to the rule. Everything else, not the case. And even with League, what's funny is my ADHD holds me back from being better. Now, why is that? If you know League, you know that there's a roster of different playable characters. Each character has you know, their own abilities, blah, 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 meta, you know, builds. Well, League has, at this point, like 160 plus of them, right? That's a lot of abilities and whatnot. The problem is, I can't stick to one character. This is part of my ADHD that also extends beyond League, literally to like any game. There's a whole joke between me and my community is like, if something new releases, like a new hero in Overwatch, it's my new main. Why? Well, because it's new. Dopamine. Ooh, monkey brain happy. Until I inevitably drop them like the next day. In League, I keep switching characters because I get bored. And here, here's the dumb thing. I get bored when I do well. I'll play a game with a character. Pop off. I don't want to play them anymore. Next. And so just moving on. One after the other, the other, the other. That don't help. Any truthers out there? Comment down below if you're like, hold up. Wait a minute. This sounds like me. What game do you play where you just can't for the life of you stick to one thing? I have, I have a friend that I play League with. Good friend IRL. We pretty much started playing League at the same time. My dude has played like two champions. We've been playing for a decade. He doesn't play anyone else because get this, he doesn't want to. <laughs> what a weirdo. All right, get a lot of that guy. No, I'm just kidding. What's weird about it is that is a completely foreign concept to me. I, I could not imagine sticking to something or playing something like that for so long. Just the, just the idea of it, my, my brain's already checked out. So, so far we've learned that with my ADHD in gaming, it's a blessing and a curse. I can quickly fall in love with the game and just as quickly fall out. I hop to literally anything and everything. And despite my best efforts, I can't stick to anything. Even when I'm hyper-focused on a game, it's still on a very macro level. I can never hone in just like that with League and a certain character. But here's the other thing that I feel like not too many people talk about. Maybe because they're embarrassed. Frankly, I am too, but I'll admit it here, all right? You know all those predatory gaming practices that have been making their way into seemingly every video game for the past, I don't know, like four or five years? You know who they're targeting with those? Spoilers, it's, it's me, people like me. I am a sucker for carrots on a stick. I love me some carrots on a stick. Might as well be Bugs Bunny. I always need something to work towards. Always need to see some sort of progress, something to chase, something new. But see, here's part of the problem too. Over the course of my gaming career, as games have evolved and subsequently, you know, gaming practices and all that sort of stuff, my tolerance for what I need for a game to satisfy me just keeps increasing to unrealistic levels. Because here's the thing, when you layer dopamine, you begin to build a tolerance. Now an IRL example that I've encountered and many other talk about would be something like working out. When you first start working out, all you need is the workout, the weights. You get in, hit the weights, get out, you feel good, feel motivated, let's do it again. But then slowly, maybe now you start uh, drinking a pre-workout. Well now suddenly you can't really do a workout without it. It doesn't feel right and you don't have the same motivation. So you need your drink. Well, and then, you know, I'm gonna listen to some music today. 
suddenly now you need weights music and a drink and so it keeps compounding and compounding to the point where you need all these x amount of things to feel like you're ready and at a normal level in order to, to do this thing when where you started it was just the weights it keeps building but same thing with gaming i need all these bells and whistles and visual eye candy now and I, I can't help it i can't really just play a video game to just play a video game if that makes sense an example i always have is i grinded halo 3 back in the day absolutely loved it. it frankly it's the reason i'm here talking to you today but if it came out today i probably wouldn't touch it for more than like a few minutes because i can't i don't just boot up a multiplayer game for the sake of just a pvp match at the end of the game i need to see progression what am i unlocking what am i working towards what challenges do i need to complete how close am i to the next level in the battle pass how much more xp to unlock this new attachment how do i unlock this new weapon skin oh i can only purchase it with real money from the store why am i opening up my wallet oh there goes a couple bucks oh i maxed out the leveling switch to a new gun i'm shooting this guy but how can i be sure i'm shooting the guy if there's an insane amount of feedback from hit markers sound effects and more i completed this match but it's not going towards any rank i'm not being rewarded for a win or punished for a loss see that's the reality now in the way my brain thinks sadly it feels like it's permanently changed my gaming base level in terms of what i need to stay engaged now there's a whole thing i could get into about not only that but then mixing it in with my job and so now hobby slash passion meets work well, that's a whole other thing but that doesn't so much have to do with my adhd now with what i just talked about most people wouldn't describe those to be very predatory gaming practices but this is where we get to the meat and potatoes that's right you know what i'm about to say microtransactions Sheesh. look microtransactions suck because they work on me league is a great example you never have to buy anything to experience the entire game sure maybe you'll have to slowly unlock you know some different champions but literally everything is there for you for free do you know how much money i've spent on skins in that game just cosmetics without telling you i'll just say this it's an unholy amount and the problem was back in the day, especially during college, when I bought majority of my skins, is I didn't have the money to buy the skins. At times, I was essentially deciding to buy a skin rather than to eat. Because what companies have literally done, and will continue to do, is use actual psychological studies to figure out what exploits our tendencies the most and how to monetize that. And those studies s seemingly have figured me out because that's the whole thing. New, shiny, yeah, I could use this weapon. Ooh, but now this weapon looks cooler. It's different. Ah, monkey brain like. And I mean, the rabbit hole goes beyond just regular gaming. I'm talking mobile games. Have you ever played a free to play mobile game? You're going through it and then you'll eventually be met with a store screen. It'll be a limited time offer, maybe a beginner's pack. And it says for 99 cents, $1, you get X amount of things. And it's like an 800 times value pack. You'd be a fool not to buy it, right? I mean, that's good value. So what do you do? You buy it. I mean, I certainly do. I'm like, well, that's sheesh. I mean, it's only a dollar. And look at all the stuff I get. Yeah, why not? Boom, they gotcha. Because they have a whole study. And turns out, all they have to do is reduce that one friction point. One time. That friction point being, ugh, having to spend money on the game. I don't know if I want to. They give you something so tantalizing that most people who wouldn't have otherwise spent any money give it a shot. And once you do that, you are exponentially more likely to buy another thing in the store. There's no longer that barrier. Well, what's one more dollar here? I mean, I already got this. Well, what's 10 more dollars? I mean, it's not that big of a deal. I've already... You can see where this goes. I already struggle managing ADHD with my day-to-day -day things, but the gaming industry is making it even harder because I'm exactly the kind of people they're targeting and I can't help but fall for it majority of the time because it feels like they know me better than I know myself. You've probably heard of the whole thing where ADHD people make terrible, frivolous, impulsive purchases. Yeah, I, I'm no exception and this is part of it. So all this culminates in me being in a weird spot with gaming. I play almost everything, but I stick to nothing. And if I try to stick to something, I've only even gotten there if it reaches this new standard of sensory overload of sorts. And because of this, I'm everywhere but nowhere in the game. And despite how much fun I might be having, the next day it's gone and I move on to the next one, which also is a problem when a lot of the practices involve monetizing certain things. And I'm like, ooh, I'm really enjoying this. Oh, this is a good decision. I won't regret this. I like this. This will be good until I never play the game again the next day. And so it 
what were all those purchases for? I love gaming, but it feels like gaming doesn't love me. Does that make any sense? It's so hard for me to fall in love with a video game simply on the merits of it being a video game. And I also understand how my brain works. I so rarely play single player games, for instance, because they're so daunting to me. And I know it doesn't make much sense to people. Well, let's say there's like a 20 hour story game, single player game, whatever. I may never get to it because while I'm working and I'm recording and I'm playing all these other games, I can't just be like, okay, I have some free time. I'm going to sit down and play an hour of this game. Not how my brain works. It's either in it or it's out. I'm either engrossed or couldn't be bothered. So with a story game, I know that if I want to play and beat it, that's all I'm going to do until I do so. Because if I play a little bit here and then switch to something else, I'm not coming back. Even though I could be sitting there like, man, I really want to play this. It never gets booted up. Nothing ever happens. Brains are weird, man. So yeah, I just wanted to kind of explain in my mind and brain how ADHD and gaming coexist. They sort of do and they sort of don't. But maybe this gives you more insight into things I do or things you hear me say or do. And for some of you listening, maybe you're like, dude, that's me, bro. I feel seen. Well, and that's awesome because I never had anybody talking. To, I, I feel like the crazy one. And I, well... I mean, that's sort of what it is, right? I am sort of the crazy one. But I so rarely hear people talking about this. It's always the other end of the thing. And so I'm sitting here like, it's me. Like, my brain is, what's wrong with me? Why can't I just play the same game like those people do and enjoy it? Why can't I enjoy it for the reasons other people are enjoying it? So hopefully, for some of you, this resonates with you. And for others, maybe it opens your eyes a little bit. I'm not saying it's a good thing or a bad thing that I am like this. But that's just the thing. This is me. This is how I operate. And so part of what I've been doing is trying to figure out ways to work with it because despite my best efforts over the many years, I certainly can't work against it because spoilers, it always wins. Which is why with YouTube, it's always been such a struggle for me because usually what performs the best on YouTube, especially in the gaming space, is consistency. You know, the audience member knows what to expect and to come back. Maybe they find somebody because of eh, Warzone. They like Warzone. Now I know where to find my Warzone stuff. This guy, he's constantly uploading it. I don't have to look elsewhere. I know where to go. But see, then there's me. Who? Well, I can't stick to anything. So I jump about. I'm everywhere all at once. And so even when the getting's good, like when I made Among Us videos, if you don't know the channel's lore, back when it released, I'd made some videos because it was sort of similar to some games me and my friends have played like Trouble in Terrorist Town. And they did pretty well at first. I was like, oh, people are enjoying this. Cool. It's a new game. We're having fun. I'll record some more. Then the videos did really well. And then the videos did really well. I'm talking, we went from an average of like 100,000 views a video to a million plus in a day. It was crazy. I was growing exponentially. Never seen anything like it. If I was able to keep up ad revenue like that, you know, my kids' kids would be set for life. But that is if I could maintain it. Lasted about a month, and then, among other reasons, I stopped, but one of them was, I was bored. M my, my brain was like, bro, not even the overwhelming success I had seen with the videos and growth were enough for my brain to be like, you know what, yeah, okay, maybe we'll play some more Among Us. This is okay. Nope, that's not even worth it. My brain's like, eh, GG, go next. We're bored. Come on. What, we're self-sabotaging? That sucks, bro. What's next? And so it's reflecting on that when I realized like nothing will ever be enough, if that makes sense. You know, some people have some measurement of like, I'll consider this to be success or this would be enough for me or this would make me happy. I just know that there will never be one thing that is enough for me. And that's both terrifying and exciting to me because it does force me into a lot of new things. However, sometimes I move on before I'm ready. And so that's where I am. So whenever you're going to comment like, bro, bring back so-and-so, or why don't you upload this more, Just blah, 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 blah. A lot of the times I'm sitting there like, yeah, I should. But, um, hey, guess what? I don't. It's why I've always petitioned people to stick around if they enjoy me or my friends or the content outside of the specific game itself. I've always hoped that a specific game will draw in a viewer and get them to click, but then what gets them to stay is myself, because that is the one constant between everything I do and everything I play is myself and what I bring to it, which I think is usually pretty entertaining. But when people watch my content and they're like, yo, dude, love your, insert literally any game here, content, bro, can't wait for more. If that's all you're looking for, well, it's no wonder I have like 2 million dead subscribers. It's a blessing and a curse. And you know what? Here's the thing. I wouldn't change a thing. It is who I am. I am who I am because of it. And that makes me different and unique. It might not be convenient 
at times, but it's also not all bad. I mainly focused on the bad, but there is some good to it. And hopefully it gives you some time for reflection and appreciation for various things. With that said, feel free to chime in down below, whether you agree, disagree, understand, don't understand, I'm crazy. Looking forward to hearing and reading everybody's thoughts. With that said, thank you very much for watching. Have yourself a fantastic day. I'll talk to you in the next one. Farewell.